Alternative data is a major issue in the markets these days. Increasingly, firms are using alternative data sets and, and different types of data to make investment decisions. You know, there are firms like Two Sigma, Rentec, and actually the other day there was an interesting article on the FT on DE Shaw and how they use technology as well as people to make investment decisions. With me to discuss the alternative data is Warren Breakstone. Warren is Managing Director and Chief Product Officer of uh, Market Data Solutions at SP Global. Warren, welcome to Tab Forum. Thank you. Good to be here, Larry. So let's take a step back. You know, what do we what is alternative data, you know, in a couple of sentences? It's interesting. We're doing a video on alternative data, and I'll start off by saying, I'm not sure I like the term alternative data. Alternative data is data. Okay. It's data that perhaps for one use case is traditional data that now that it's being provided for a use case that it was never originally intended, it becomes alternative to that second use case. So very much alternative data is often in the eye of the beholder. So I'll give you an example. We have a robust metals and mining database that has been sold to uh, mining companies for many, many years. And they use that data set to uh, evaluate opportunities relating to mines uh, and, and do their analysis with it. Now that that data has been structured in a way that can be delivered to investment managers, investment managers look at that same data set that was traditional to a metals and mining company as alternative to their use case. Also basically looking at and trying to understand and look at the, some of the same you know, data that a, a mining company would look at and then try to help value that mining company. Right, or serve other, other needs that they, that they may have, Supply investment chain. or otherwise. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so how, how do you start seeing people um, let's move out of the investment, you know, uh, the alternative data, you know, uh, nomenclature, but how do you see folks actually engaging in this? Of course, you know, if it's a mining company, I'm going to wind up, you know, trying to um, take a look at ore reserves or something like that. But how do you see more traditional firms, more in traditional investment firms, you know, leverage some of this information? Well, what's really interesting is that it's not just about the investment management client anymore, that actually we're having uh, quite a lot of activity outside of that core segment corporations, insurance firms, commercial and uh, investment banks are all eager to get a hold of what is termed alternative data. Um, one, of the big, one of the big reasons uh, why is that there's a lot of data now that, that's out there, that's mm -hmm. available. Uh, and uh, uh, by one account, 90% uh, of the world's data has been created in just the last two years. Right. But firms have historically struggled with getting access to this data. But what's been happening is technology is sort of caught up. You think about a terabyte of uh, a terabyte of memory uh, costs you something like ten dollars a month with Amazon. Half that with Apple. Hmm. Uh, a gigahertz of processing power would cost you the equivalent of a cup of coffee. And now the programming languages like Python and R and other uh, suites of, of of tools have evolved to the point that the data analysis has become far more accessible. Uh, to, to these clients and these users. So the storage of the, inf the, the capture of the information, the storage of it, the analysis uh, becomes a lot easier for just, you know, everybody. Right, and it allows them to get to that analysis and to the, get to that data uh, quicker. I will say that uh, what's kind of interesting is that even with all of this technology, clients will spend something like five to ten times more on the data mm -hmm. after they purchase it. Let me say that again. Okay. Clients will spend more, five to ten times more on the data after they've actually purchased it. Why? Okay. They're, they're, they're applying those dollars to clean the data, to structure the data, to link the data, concord it with other data sets, to database the data. All of this work that has to happen before you get to the value add activity of analysis and decision making. Uh, by one account, they'll spend 80% of their time on all of this preparatory work before getting the 20% of the value add activity. So it's incumbent to be able to get clients through that process as quickly as we can. That sounds like a business opportunity. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so how do you wind up doing this you know, for your clients? How do you wind up doing this or how do you wind up helping them accelerate the, the, the time to value of purchasing this information? Right, so it starts with helping them figure out what type of data could be most useful to them. Uh, as we mentioned, there's just a tremendous amount of data that's now available out there. Um, to be able to provide value-add services, whether it be in the form of quantum mental research or, or sample data or, or code to help them get going, to help narrow their, their focus, their, their focus yeah. a bit is, is, is helpful. Second, to be able to 
provide data that is linked to other data that they use, and to okay. do that right out of the box, ultimately. So, like, a, like you know, market data or other type of information. Fundamental data, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Earnings, estimate data, right. mm -hmm. transcripts. You have, you know, you you name it. You know, interestingly, um, folks think about uh, alternative data, uh, and they look for interesting alternative data. But I think the bigger opportunity is to try to figure out alternative data that when used in conjunction with other data becomes that much more valuable. Uh, and that's where the linking comes into play. So, you know, so I guess that also ties into how to acquire this because there's so many data sets out there. There's so much information that can be scraped from the web. There's so much content, you know, um, you could be stuck on like you know, square one and right. spinning your wheels a lot. So how how do you, should you how should you think about, you know, certainly the two sigmas and the Rentex and the DE Shaws and those guys kind of know what they're doing. But what about the vast majority of other asset managers that have been managing money for eons, you know, mm -hmm. in traditional traditional ways? How well, do the, they the wind up getting involved? The best practice that we've seen is when customers come in and they start with a question or they start with a perspective. And from there we can work with them to help them find the right data to help them fill out fill out the uh, the, the equation to provide. So getting uh, back to your mind. mining example, if I'm a mining analysis, and I'm following the Canadian miners and the Australian miners, then the next option would be, well, let me take a look at what they're producing out of the mine or trucking or right. you know, where's it That's being right. trucked to or where's it being shipped to, things like that. Discrete alternative data is very nice. But decisions are not made using a discrete content set. Decisions are made with multiple data sets coming together. So a triangulation process. It, pr precisely. And so we spend a lot of our time trying to figure out with our clients what combinations of data, when brought together, will drive that incremental value. So I'll give you a few examples. We mentioned uh, uh, movement or foot traffic data earlier. Foot traffic data is very, very popular right now. Mm -hmm. uh, people are interested in the movement of people, people are interested in the movement of goods. Uh, but it becomes exponentially more valuable when you combine foot traffic data with our REIT property database of, of 100,000 properties so, in 46 different countries. And so you're starting with the properties that are most of interest to you, and then you're overlaying the traffic. Which of the REITs that I'm looking at have that's the most exact, foot traffic? And, that, that's and exactly right. What's their demographic data around you know those areas or that, whatever, that, I assume, something that, like that. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, transcripts uh, are, are very, very popular. Be able to read the like earnings, earnings uh, call calls or like other that. event type of transcripts. Mm -hmm. But when you layer on analytics on top of it, sentiment scoring and other sorts of analytics, you're making the, the transcripts even more valuable to your clients. Um, ESG data is very, very popular. We're very fortunate to have TrueCost, which is the leader in uh, environmental uh, data. They look at uh, carbon and uh, water footprints of the companies they mm -hmm. serve. ESG data is very, very interesting for the 14,000 companies that they follow. But it's even more interesting when you overlay the ESG data on companies' full supply chain. So you can see a, a full picture uh, of the impact uh, from an ESG perspective. So it's a company, but it's suppliers. So if I'm a retailer and I only have a couple of stores or just, you know, and my footprint looks good, but I'm buying stuff from all sorts of nasty people down the, down, you know, that, down in the, that's some other country. That's exactly right. Uh, interesting, interesting. So you guys just recently made some high profile acquisitions right. of, uh, in, the, in this space. Um, uh, Ken Cho, a uh, big high profile right. uh, alternative data company, you know, you bought that about a year ago or so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how are you leveraging these? What, what are these tools doing to, to help you guys uh, and how can you provide value to your clients with them? So two big acquisitions recently, Ken Cho being one of them, uh, Pangeva being another one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, as it relates to Ken Cho, uh, we, we have many of the same challenges that our clients do. Uh, how do you uh, ingest data quickly? How do you link that data to other data sets? How do you find insight out of that data? Um, how do you do it quickly? How do you create new interesting data and insights uh, based on, uh, off of uh, the content you have? And, and we're looking at Kensho very much the same way, to help us take data that we would bring into our environment and then ultimately offer it out to our clients. Processes that can take months and months. How do we reduce that to weeks or days? 
Hmm. How do we link that data to other data sets, going back to the uh, earlier comment that it's about data convergence, that and really, triangulation, uh, yeah. and triangulation mm -hmm. use your word, mm -hmm. that, that matters. Well, Kentro has capabilities to help us bring together data sets in a logical way for our clients to do their sorts of analysis and, 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 and value-add research. Um, how do you create new insights and new derivative data, or if you will, alternative data on traditional data? Well, Kensho's got some capabilities. Data squared. <laughs> precisely. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and that's where a lot of our effort is with Kensho. Second acquisition, Pangeva. Very, very interesting uh, uh, business. Uh, the foremost provider of, uh, of supply chain data, of, uh, of goods that are shipped over uh, cargo ships. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, about 40% of uh, the world global trade uh, it, uh, is captured in uh, the Pangeva data set. So you know who's shipping from where, where is that shipment going to, what uh, is... Uh, how long does it take? How long does it take? What, what, what's the value of the goods being, being moved around? Are there empty ships or full ships being going back and forth? There mm -hmm. you go. Uh, and so it becomes very, very compelling. Now to go back to the premise, it's, it's more compelling when combined with another data set. So what we've done with Pangeva uh, is we've, we've, we've curated some of the data that just deals with pharmaceuticals, as an mm -hmm. example. And then we've combined it with the FDA Orange Book. So what you can now see using this pharma package is to be able to anticipate drugs that are coming off patent. What is the behavior of the, the, the generic providers ahead of that, of that uh, activity? So you can anticipate who's going to get the 180-day exclusive once that patent uh, 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 expires. And you can get this insight by looking at multiple streams of different premium data to give you that, that, give you that edge. Interesting. Uh, with, with that, uh, Warren, thanks a lot. Warren Breckstone, uh, Managing Director and Chief Product Officer of um, Data Management Solutions at S&P Global. Thanks for joining us uh, on Tab Forum talking about alternative or not alternative, but <laughs> additional aug augmentative data, I guess. Well, right. we'll start a new term. Um, I'm Larry Tab, founder and research chairman of Tab Group, and thanks for joining us on Tab Forum. Mm -hmm.